If you're wondering, am I in the right place? Oh, yeah. Let me assure you of one thing. If God's in the house, yes. you're in the right place. Yes. If you're in the book, you're in the right place. Yes. I tell you, God's in the healing business. He's in the delivery business. I tell you this morning, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't throw in the yes. towel. Hold on, God's going to show you. Yes. God's going to show you. Right. He's going to show you those questions that you've been asking. And he poured it out upon all that was in the house. Everybody from this corner of the room to that corner of the room, from that corner of the room to this corner of the room. That means everybody was speaking in tongues. God's Spirit is no respecter of persons, Pastor. I love that about God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we just give him a hand clap of praise right now? Hallelujah. 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 It's beautiful outside. Just bring him in the house. I feel good in the Holy Ghost. Anybody feel good? give honor to your wonderful pastor and his family. I feel like I'm among family today. Yes. Isn't that how church is supposed to be? Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. We're supposed to just come into the house of God yes. and feel like you're among family. Yes. You're my family. Yes. And when I have a need, I can go to you and say, could you pray for me? Oh, yes. Could you cry with me? Yes. Could you rejoice with me? Yes. That's family. All right. Amen. That's what church is supposed to be like. Oh, hallelujah. I feel such a sweet presence of God in this house. Hallelujah. He almost. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad to have my wife here with me today. She's my right arm. I love her. I wouldn't even think of doing this without her. Praise oh, God. Praise. Hallelujah. She's been such a help to me. I think she's yes. going to sing for us today. Praise God. Praise she's made praise ready. God. And sing for us. I told her, she said, what do you want me to sing? I said, whatever God lays in your heart to sing. Yes. Sing it, but do it as unto the Lord. Yes. Right. Amen. Hey. Whatever we do today. Yes. In this house, just remember this. Right. Do it as unto the Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus, with everything that we have. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when she begins to sing today, I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to just lift your hands and I want you to sing it to Jesus. I want you in your own way today. Not in my way. Not in man's way. Not my will, but thine be done. Amen? I want you in your own way today. Just begin to lift God up, and I promise you, God will show up in this house. Yes, He will. If you will begin to lift God up, God will show up, He will show off, and He will show out. Because He's a mighty God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all worship with her this morning as she sings. Hallelujah.
Let's just ask the Lord, take us there this morning, God. Take me all the way there this morning, God. I want everything that you have for me today. to do something in this place today. I felt like that God is not only here, but He is expanding, Pastor. How far the... You know, when I read the book of, of the prayer of Jabez. Remember that book of Jabez? When he says, God, increase my boundaries. That's right. Increase, you know, if every one of us, if we would pray that today, that if God would increase your boundaries, Amen. Not only not only in the natural, but God would increase your boundaries spiritually. Uh -huh. Amen. That you would begin to grow. That you would begin to illuminate everything around you. In other words, when you step into Walmart, everything around you begins to glow. Yeah. And people begin to wonder, hey, what is that that you have? Why do you smile like that? Don't you know things are bad? Oh, I pray that God will just illuminate yeah. me and that my boundaries would begin to stretch. Yeah. Right. You see, I want God to stretch me. Yeah. I want Him to make me uncomfortable sometimes. Right. Amen. It's not good to be comfortable all the time. No, right. Oh, I'm speaking against theology right now, I reckon. But I'll tell you right now, it's not good for us to stay comfortable all the time. Right. Right. We need God to stretch us out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Move some things. Begin to move our furniture around, so to speak. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. I'm unmetal a little bit. Let me get on. I hasten this morning, but I read a story a little while back. It was about the Civil War, about how when it came to Louisiana, and the Civil War, it, it stayed long, the story said. And when it came to New Orleans, there was a family there by the, by the name of the McKinney family. And the McKinney family, they fled to Texas during this war. But when the war was over, they came home and... and the to a place called Avery's Island, which was a community that was built on a salt dome there in, in Louisiana on the Bayou country. And the salt would be a part of their salvation, so to speak, and of the McKinney family. And they that and some hot peppers that they had there. But a dozen, a few years before that, before the war, a a, a soldier that was returning from Mexico gave Edmund McKinney. He gave him some dried up hot peppers. And he decided to, that he liked them so much that he would plant them. That he would grow fields of these hot peppers at, at Avery Island. And uh, where his wife owned a, a, a salt mining business. And upon the family's return from Texas, they took stock of Avery Island and all the crops were ruined and the house had been plundered and it had been burned and been torn through and and just everything had been just devastating. The only thing that was left was some overgrown fields of hot peppers. That's all he had left. Nothing was left except some overgrown fields of hot peppers. And, but McKinney, I noticed in this story that McKinney, he took stock in what he had. He said, I, I have some salt. I have some peppers in abundance. 
But then is what is it, this is what it said, Pastor, that McKinney got to work. Okay. He took stock in what he had, right. number one. But then the, then the story said that he got to work All right. after that, praise God. And he harvested these peppers. And he began the process of devising this spicy sauce, praise God, using the Avery Island salt and some French vinegar. And digging through the town dump, McKinney located 350 bottles of discarded perfume bottles. He cleaned them up and he filled them with this sauce that he had. And it quickly became, it quickly became a hit around the world. And today he's even known as Tabasco Company. All right. mm -hmm. And it was run by a, a fifth generation McKinney family. Praise God. Yes. But the thing that really got me about the whole story was it all started with one man. Right. Right. One man whose life had been destroyed. All right. right. Everything had been taken. Uh -huh. But one man's desire, uh -huh. one man that says, you know what? I am determined right. to be blessed. Yeah. I am determined right. to make it. Right. I wonder this morning, is there anybody in the house today right. that says, you know what? I don't have much. Right. Right. But I am determined right. to make it. Yeah. I am determined. I wonder for somebody that will spend And this morning I want to take you to another man that's found in the only chapter of the Bible that was solely devoted to him. The only chapter in the Bible. And his name is Isaac. Right between his more famous dad, as we know him as Abraham, and his son Jacob, he is normally ignored. Isaac is normally ignored. His life was marked by a few triumphs, and but many trials. Mm -hmm. Anybody had any trials lately? Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're living in this world, you're going to have some trials, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Until we get out of here, until we get on the shore, oh young, yeah. we're going to have some trials. That's right. Hey folks, we live in a fallen world, amen? Yeah. This world is sick. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah. It needs a God. Yes. It needs a God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I, well, let me get on. Hallelujah. I feel some preach up in here, Pastor. All right. Praise All right. God. Praise God. But in this chapter today, his life was marked by trials, but in this chapter, Isaac shines. All right. <laughs> Isaac shines. So if you have your Bibles this morning, Genesis chapter 26, starting with verse Number one, could we all stand just one more time for the reading of the word? Praise God. Amen. Genesis chapter 26, starting with verse number one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26 and verse number one that there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him. And he said, Go not down into Egypt. He said, Don't, 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 don't do it. Don't go into Egypt. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody, anybody, the Lord ever told you not to do something? Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, Don't go down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. And he said, don't just dwell there. I want you to sojourn in this land. Uh -huh. And then he said this. He said, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto all thy seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham, thy father. Let's skip on down to verse 12. 
the Bible says that then Isaac sowed. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And it said he received in that same year. Listen. He received in that same year a hundredfold. Anybody get that? He sowed in that land. And in that same year, the Lord returned unto him a hundredfold. And then it says this. <laughs> he gave a hundredfold and then the Lord blessed him. All right. So he sowed like the Lord told him to sojourn in the land and then the Lord blessed him after that. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Set your Bibles aside just for a moment. All over this building, could you lift your hands? Let's ask God the anointing right now one more time before we see it. God, I pray right now that every ear, let every eye, let every heart be open and be attuned to your word today, Lord. I pray, God, that every heart that's in this place today would be pricked, oh God. I pray that every heart today in this place, oh God, speak to us, Lord. We are desperate for you today, God. We need a move of God today, Lord, on this day of Pentecost, God. We need a move of God as we celebrate your church, as we celebrate you today. God, we need a move of God. We are desperate, Lord, in the house today. And Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Oh, now say, now the rest of you shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. You see, we don't want to tell us here this morning. I promise I won't jump on top of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may jump and shout because that's the kind of God I serve. Amen. Yeah. You wonder why we run the aisles. You wonder why we jump. You wonder why we clap. You wonder why? Because God is good. Yes. Hallelujah. There is not going to be a quiet heaven. No. I hate to ruin your theology today, but there's not going to be a quiet heaven. The Bible said that angels are going to be rejoicing around the throne. This morning, I want to preach with the help of the Lord on this subject. Stay in the land. Yes. Stay in the land. Somebody say that. Stay, stay in, the in the land. No matter what, stay in the land. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me preface this by saying this. That God loves you. Christ, He does. God loves you. Before you were even born, God loved you. Yes, He does. God knew you. Before you drew your first breath, God loved you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He already knew that you were going to be here today. Yes, he did. Right. You say, some people say, well, I just kind of got here. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no you just didn't kind of get here. Amen. God knew you were going to. There's no happenstances. There's no kawinky dinks in God. Amen. Right. God knew you were going to be here for such a time right. as this. Right. On Pentecost Sunday to experience. Right. And yeah. not only to experience. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Before you cried out in repentance, God had already offered up the supreme sacrifice. Yes, He did. Hallelujah. Somebody point to yourself and say, God loves me. God loves me. If you didn't, we wouldn't be here because the devil would be here took us out. Right. Oh, hallelujah. It's because of God's grace, for the cause of God's mercy that we're sitting here today. It's because of God's grace that nothing happened to us this morning. It's because of God's grace that we got up today. It's because of His mercy that He seen fit one more time to give us a, a time to get it right. For today is the day of salvation. Right now. Right. Right now. Did you know that you are a living, breathing miracle? Yes. Did you know that? Did you know that this body, as pitiful as it is right now, uh -huh. is a living, breathing miracle? Right. Because within your mind, Pastor, there's neurons in it and, and all these networking things that are going on that results in all your senses. Right. Your five, you know, sight, smell, taste, sound, touch. 
You can distinguish between hundreds and hundreds of colors. Right. You can distinguish between, you can determine between us 10,000 smells. Mm -hmm. 10,000 smells, but yet your skin is so sensitive that it can feel the brush of a soft feather as it scrubs by your hand. And you can hear the ever so slight rustling of a breeze that goes through the trees and the wind begins to, to, to move the leaves. You can hear that. Oh yeah, and by the way, did you know that the brain generates more electrical uh, 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 impulses more than all the world's telephones in one day? Wow. The brain. The brain does that. My brain. I, I, that blows me away. My brain. Hallelujah. Than all the world's telephone. Did you know that the emotions of all the emotions that you have and attitudes reside in a tiny part of your brain, no bigger than a pecan? Uh-huh. A pecan. Praise God. All the emotions reside in that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Amen. We are. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. The, the average human body, listen, I'm going somewhere, stay with me. The average human body contains enough sulfur to kill the fleas on a dog's back. Huh. It, it contains enough carbon to make 900 pencils. The human body. It contains enough potassium to fire a small cannon. Praise God. Did you know it contains enough fat tissue to make seven bars of soap? I, 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 I probably got eight, nine, eight, eight, ten. I don't know, Pastor. I'm working. Praise God. But did you know that it has enough phosphorus to make 2,200 match heads? Did you know that it also, in all that, it has enough water to fill up a 10 gallon aquarium? Huh. Mm -hmm. The human body. Praise God. You see, you have the right stuff to make it. All right. God gave you the right stuff to make it. And not only that, but He made us a suitable environment. Right. Right. Which to dwell in. Hallelujah. Which to live. And each day, He made it fresh. Each day, we walk in a newness with God. Every morning, His mercies are anew. Every day. Hallelujah. Think about that today. When you, when, when you decide that I'm nothing, when you decide that I'm, I'm just nothing in this world, think about that. And you can time this sentence. That it would take me to say that. When, if you could time this sentence right here, 50,000 cells in your body will die and be regenerated. Like that. You see, we are a work in progress. God designed us to be renewed every day. Day in and day out, He designed us to be renewed and gives us new grace every day. Hallelujah. Morning by morning, day by day, God is with us every day. Hallelujah. From that day of Pentecost until now, God said, I will never lose you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. That's right. You know what I'm telling me? God's got my back. Yes. Yes. I got God's back. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Why? Because He loves you. Yes. Why? Because He loves you. Yes. He loves you. Yes, He does. He loves you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about staying in the land today. You see, the enemy wants you to believe today that God has somehow shortchanged you. Yeah. The enemy will have you to believe today that God has somehow, you know, don't love me anymore. Yeah. But let me remind you of something today. That the enemy is a liar. That's right. Yeah. And the father of all lies. That's right. yeah. Hallelujah. You see, Adam and Eve bit into his life. Uh -huh. Praise God. Esau, he slurped up his excuse. And Achan believed that lie when he picked up that accursed thing. Yeah. Amen. And, and Jonah rebelled. And Elijah nearly gave up. And on and on and on. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning, where sin doth abound, right. grace does much more abound. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You haven't gone so far that God can't reach you. You haven't been to no place that has been so bad that God can't get a hold of you. That God can't save you. That God can't feel you. You've not done nothing so bad that God cannot feel you. Well,
You see, Isaac, Isaac, he was an obscure man in Scripture. Isaac, he's the only son that was born to the aged Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. If you read it. Almost, he almost sacrificed it. And he waited almost 40 years old to get married. Now, that's the bad thing. Just a fact. But if you look at Isaac's life and Abraham's life, it was a reflection of one another. Mm -hmm. If you compare the two, it's a reflection of one another. And Abraham would leave his birthplace. And so did Isaac. Mm -hmm. And Abraham almost lost his wife. And so did Isaac. And on and on and on. And Abraham was tested with the famine, hallelujah, of his day. And so was Isaac. Listen to me today. Until the famine of Isaac's, of Isaac, until the famine, Isaac's life was a dim reflection of his father's life. Until the famine. But in the famine of Abraham's day, he went to Egypt. Right. And Isaac, pastor, was about to do the same thing. Uh -huh. It's amazing. He was about to follow in his daddy's footsteps. But God said, no, not now. Stop. Right. You know, we're not going to do that. Don't leave. Remain in the land. Right. He said, don't leave. You see, God breaks that pattern. Right. And He shows us that there's no set formula in the life of faith. Right. He breaks that pattern. You see, it's okay to look on the past generation's experience. But eventually, but eventually, you're going to have to get a relationship with yeah. God on your own. Praise God. It's good to see that Grandma had a relationship. It was good to see that Grandpa had a relationship. It was good to see that past generation. Right now. God's wanting you. God's wanting you. He's wanting you. Hallelujah. Oh, give him a hand. Clap of praise. Eventually, you're going to have to have that flow to the mess of experience. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to be your all. He wants to be your everything. Not your yesterday. He wants to be your today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, God told Isaac, He said, I want you to stay in Gerar. Gerar? It's already got two strikes against it. Gerar? God, really? You want me to stay there? It's in the midst of a famine. It was occupied by some pretty bad people. And not to mention it had always been a contention for Abraham. Isn't that? Gerar was a bad place. Gerar was a dry place. Gerar had always been a thorn in the side of Abraham. And Isaac was told by God to stay there. He was told by God. He said, I want you to stay here, sojourn here, and then I will bless you. Mm -hmm. My mama. You say, what are you trying to, what are you trying to say, preacher? Sometimes God works his will in the most unlikely place. Right. God works his will. Could you imagine? But God. You know how we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm being real today. That's yeah. right. Amen. But God. Isaac must have cried. This is a bad place. Yes. There's a famine in the land. There's some pretty mean, a mean people hanging out around here. But God, don't worry, stay in the land. Uh -huh. Don't worry, stay in the land. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know who this is for this morning. But I'm preaching to somebody right now. If you will hold up, I promise you God will show up. Yeah. All right. If you will hold up, God will show up. Listen, if God tells you to stay put, you better sink some stakes in homestead to territory. That's right. Because right. I'm telling you, God's got a plan. Yes, He does. God's got a plan, praise God. Come on now. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying that God works His will. That's right. Not my will. Right. Not our will. Yeah. But it's His will. Right. Yes. The most you see, we forget that about God sometimes. We forget that He's a root out of dry ground. We forget that He arrives on the fourth day, one day too late. We forget that He arrives on the fourth watch of the night, the darkest hour. You see, we forget that about God. Hallelujah. Somebody hear me. God clutches the victory out of jaws of defeat. He works through circumstances to shape 
His will. All right. Hallelujah. Stay in the land. You don't understand, preacher. There's a famine in the land. My job's getting bad. My family's acting up. You don't understand. Don't worry, stay in the land. But preacher, you you still don't understand. My marriage is going south. All right. Stay in the land. All right. Stay in the land. That's right. Stay in the land. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Stay in the land. I got a plan. Right. The friction on my job is getting too much. The problems with my family are getting too much. Don't worry. Stay in the land. All right. You don't worry. I got this stuff going on. It's my health. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Don't worry. Stay in the land. All right. God's got a word. Yes. God's got a word. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. His word is my grace is sufficient for me. Oh, thank you. Stay in the land. Don't run from it. Stay in the land. Because you don't quite know where you're running to. That's right. You don't quite know where you're running into. I'm going to tell this story again. My wife, she had this stuff put on our phones by Greg Fisher. And every time we get a storm, you know, we have a bad storm and Sam for that tornado that comes through these uh -huh. springs. <coughs> so she decided to put these weather alerts on our phone that when a tornado came or when something happened, they would call us. Well, we were at home, and this thing went off. Great fish. Get to a safe place. There's a tornado in your area. Pastor, I kid you not. I looked around, and I said, honey, and that was no honey. <laughs> honey was in the car. <laughs> She was in the car going. <laughs> she wasn't playing. No. Uh -uh. So what did we do? I ran out and I got in the car and we went to the church. All right. Uh -huh. How many know the church house is a safe place? Oh, yeah. 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 Come on, somebody. Yeah. In the time of trouble, yeah. you can run to the church house. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. In the time of storm. You can run to the church house. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. God told him, said, you go in that upper room. Yes. Uh -huh. And you wait on me. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Don't you know there were some storms going on outside? Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. But we ran to the church. And that storm came through right beside the church. <laughs> Blew the doors of the annex of the church open. As it went by. Mm. Why do you what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, don't run from it because you don't quite know what you're running to. Right. You see, our house was further from the storm. Yes. We ran closer to the storm. Right. Huh. You don't quite know what you're running to. You remember Naomi? Remember the story of Naomi? Remember how she ran from Bethlehem, which was called a house of bread? During a famine. Uh -huh. Remember, she she and her husband and her two sons ran to a cursed Moab. Yep. Right. Remember that? And then she returns without those three. Right. And then this is what she said. She said, call me Mara. Right. Listen, or oh, call me bitter because bitter is the person who runs from God. My mama. That's right. Here's the word. Stay in the land. Yes. If you're thinking about leaving, if you're thinking about throwing in the towel, if you're thinking I can't do this anymore, yes. oh hallelujah, Pastor. Come on. If you're thinking about it today, before you throw in the towel, give God one more shot. Yeah. 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 Give God one more chance at it. Yeah. Before you throw in the towel, stay in the land and God will bless you. Yes. Stay in this land and He will give unto you a hundredfold. I'm telling you, God's in the blessing business and He will fight for you. Hallelujah. If God tells you to hold tight, don't worry about what the facts say. Don't worry about 
about what the facts say. Just rest in the simple truth that God moves in the most unlikely places. Right. And the most unlikely people. For that matter. You see, he found David in the back pasture. He met Moses in the desert. He met Job in a tribe. He met, he met three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace. All right. He met Daniel in a lion's den. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Right. Yeah. He said, my, my. That's right. Is there anywhere that God won't show up? Right. You can't hide no place that God right. won't show up. That's That's right. Right. If I make my bed, Oh, come, come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, he works in surprising places. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. So Isaac, so Isaac received this word. And what did he do? Genesis 26 and 12 said that Isaac sowed in that land. Yes, yes. You said, now wait a minute, preacher. That don't make no sense. They're in the middle of a drought. Uh -huh. They're in the middle of a famine. Oh, God. Everything's dry. Everything's dusty. Everything's just gone and dead. Everything's dried up. The wells have gone dry. The creeks have dried up. What do you mean? Isaac sowed in that land. He stayed where God told him to stay. Yes. In the midst of a fit. You see, it was a test for Isaac's obedience. All right. That's what it was. It was a test. The Jews note this. That Isaac's father's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Listen. They note that his son's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. But Isaac's name, Pastor, was never changed. Right. Why? Because the Jews say that Isaac passed the test. All right. yeah. Woo! Anybody get that besides me? Hey, they didn't run. Isaac didn't run. They ran. Right. 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 Abraham ran to Egypt in the time of business. And God said, stay put. Stay put. Stay put. God's got something for you. Stay put. There's a healing coming your way. Stay put. There's a blessing coming your way. Stay put. Hallelujah. Stay in the land. Praise God. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. In desperate times, Isaac sowed. In the midst of a famine, Isaac sowed. In the face of an enemy, Isaac sowed. He sowed in the land of adversity. In a harsh climate. What faith? Each handful. Right. And he sold out each handful that he throw. Imagine the faith when you throw it on dry ground. Pastor, you know how it is. Yeah. When you throw it on dry ground. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. When you throw it out on dry ground. What each faith? Each handful. You see, some don't understand why he's still sowing, Pastor. No. They don't get it. Right. Some don't understand. By all rights, the devil said there should never have been a church here. Yes. Not a truth believing church. Right. But guess what? Right. Look at here. Look at here. Somebody ought to rejoice about truth. I said the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. We hear it and we preach it and we watch it and we step it day by day in the dry land. We sow seed in the dry land. In the midst of a thing, we sow seed. throw in there, Pastor. That's a lot of seed that you throw in there, Isaac. Hey, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. That's right. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, listen, that he received in that same year an hundredfold and then the Lord blessed him. Mm. Above and beyond a hundredfold. Right. The Lord blessed him. And the Bible says that Naomi said, you know what? I went out full, but I came back empty. But Isaac said, I went out empty, but I came back full. Amen. I'm telling somebody, anybody want to come out full today? Let's all stand right now to our feet all over this building on this day of Pentecost right now. I believe God speaking to some people. Musicians, you can come. Hallelujah, if you will, today. But I want this message to go across to somebody today. That's thinking about throwing it all in. Oh, glory. Praise I can't God. get off it today. There's somebody wondering, 
Why am I here? Why here? Why here in Rayford? Why right here? Why right now? What are you trying to do, God? Don't worry about it. Stay put. Don't worry about it. Stay in the land. He's going to bless you. Yes, he is. Don't worry about it. God's got a plan. He always has a plan. Yes, yes he does. These altars are open right now. You can be triumphant. I'm telling you something right now. I'm not beckoning to anybody, but I'm telling you, if you want something from God, come and get into this altar where the Holy Ghost is poured out this morning. You want something from God this morning? Would you come? You need the Holy Ghost this morning? Won't you come? You need a refilling this morning? Won't you come? I'm telling you right now, there's a hundredfold blessing coming your way. There's a hundredfold blessing coming into this city. There's a hundredfold blessing coming into this church. There's a hundredfold blessing. And after the hundredfold.